with UTEX Industries, and I'm here with Brian Hasselton over at our Accuseal facility. Brian, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do at, at Accuseal? Uh, I'm Brian Hasselton. I, I work at Accuseal for about six years now, uh, division of UTEX Industries. Um, we primarily focus on uh, manufacturing peak and PTFE components, uh, spring energized seals, backup rings, uh, stuff of that nature. And so the main reason I wanted to do a video with you today was really to focus on the materials we use. So our main materials are peak and PTFE. And I know when we design, we get questions a lot of time from our customers asking us, well, why do you choose those materials for this particular design? And uh, so I just wanted to kind of dig in a little bit deeper about, you know, the characteristics of the material and help explain our, our thought process when we choose these materials. So uh, I wanted to start off with the peak. Uh, so could you kind of explain a little bit about uh, the characteristics of peak? Uh, typically we use peak to, as a backup ring to uh, close off the extrusion gap for the primary seal that we have. Um, it's a harder material. It's pretty flexible compared to metal. Uh, so it, it's able to move and close off that extrusion gap so there's no flow of the primary seal. Sometimes we do use peak for uh, the, the primary seal, such as an static application or a dynamic application that is going over ports. What about some of the characteristics of like the temperatures and the pressures that it can withstand? Peak is great uh, at high pressures, high temperatures. It's, it's good from negative 75 degrees Fahrenheit up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. It's very inert. So what type of fillers do we use in peak? I know we've got the molly filled and carbon filled. Uh, what do they do to the peak and you know, why do we choose this? Typically, we use a carbon fiber and glass fiber in our peak. Uh, sometimes we add PTFE. Um, the carbon fiber and glass fiber are great for creep resistance, uh, dimensional stability at higher temperatures. Um, you're adding the PTFE and carbon in there for rare wear resistance. Uh, the carbon's less abrasive than the glass fibers. Um, they're great for bearings uh, and great for backup rings. Okay, so are there any instances where we might not use like a glass filled peak? Yeah, there's a, we don't want to use glass filled peak in certain instances, such as if there's hydrofluoric acid in there, since the glass is attacked by that. And also, uh, when you're using glass and carbon filled peaks, you have to be careful with the geometry that you're using um, because it, it makes the peak a little more brittle. And so you have to be aware of that and make sure that you're not making a geometry that'll crack easily. Um, now, what about our PTFE? You know, can you? Go into the characteristics about what uh, what PTFE does. Uh, yeah, PTFE is a great material over a wide range of temperatures, cryogenic up to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Has a very low coefficient of fr friction. It's self-lubricating uh, and it has great chemical resistance. Resistance. Um, and also with PTFE, you can add mini fillers in there to make them do all make it do all kinds of different things. So what are the most popular fillers that we use for PTFE? Uh, typically we use um, glass fiber, carbon powder, carbon fiber, uh, graphite, molybdenum disulfide, bronze, and aromatic polyester. Uh, the glass fibers and the carbon, that helps the, the creep. So it doesn't creep as much. It helps it at higher temperatures. The molybdenum disulfide and the graphite and the aromatic polyester are great for um, lubricity as well. And as it's a softer material, so it's not as abrasive to your metal components. Whereas the glass fibers, it, it could be pretty abrasive. You can also add bronze in there, which help it increase its rigidity. Rigidity. So you can use it as like a backup ring and stuff like that. Okay, so you know we have the peak, we have the PTFE. Uh, what do we typically use PTFE for uh, when it comes to the designs? Uh, typically, we we use PTFE as the main sealing element. Um, it's a soft material, although you know even when it's in a cold application, so it's still like, flexible at cold applications, but it's also still holds itself together at higher temperatures. Brian, why would you why would you choose like a peak or PTFE versus a rubber compound? 
Uh, we would choose PEAK and PTFE over a rubber compound when there's higher temperatures, higher pressures, lower temperatures, uh, chemical compatibility. One thing you have to watch out for for PTFE and PEAK is it doesn't have any memory as an elastomer would, so you need something to energize it as well as it doesn't, it's not as soft as an elastomer, so you, you also need really good surface finishes like an a 8 to a 16 for dynamic surfaces and a 32 uh, RA for a static sealing surface. I know, you know, when I'm, when I'm working with my customers and we're doing seals, a lot of times we can get a peak, a peak part or PTFE part pretty quick out the door versus a rubber component. Um, you know, can you explain a little bit more about that? Yeah, so peak and PTFE, we're, we're able to mold billets, uh, a cylindrical rod, and we're able to machine off of there. Uh, for PTFE, we do compression molding and it's molded, then it's centered into the oven. And have a billet and then we're able to put it on a lathe and machine it any geometry we want. Peak is injection molded into billets as well and we were able to machine that all here. Uh, so that's why there's no additional tooling that is required. It's all you know stock shapes and so it's easy to just put on a lathe and run it really quick. How does that work with the fillers? I mean I, I imagine it's you know, I talk with Ed Landry all the time, and he kind of relates everything to cooking. So it's it's like a pancake recipe or something. You add certain stuff, and you get what you need. Is it kind of the same thing? Yeah, with the fillers, uh, we we pretty much we buy our fillers. We buy our PTFE and peak with the fillers already mixed into it. So by the okay. time we we're doing just the molding, and it's pretty much the same, uh, different parameters, but it's all pre mixed when we get it. Brian, what type of testing can we provide our customers on our compounds? We've done API and North Sock immersion testing on many of our compounds. We also can provide any mechanical properties here uh, from any batch of material that we send them. I know I get a question a lot about uh, the PSL4. Are we certified to PSL4 at our active facility? Yes, uh, pretty much anything we do here is PSL4. All right, Brian, well, I appreciate you doing this video with me. I'm, uh, I'm working on wrapping it up here, but I just have one more question for you. Is if you have one thing to say about UTEX, what do you want people to know? Uh, I would like people to know that uh, as the engineering team, we, we're willing to work with the customers on any application. Uh, we're there to help provide any support, what, whatever material it is. Thanks for watching our video on Peak and PTFE. If you'd like to learn more about UTEX Industries and our plastic design, make sure to visit our website at www.utexind.com. If you have any questions, you can reach out there on LinkedIn or give us a call.